Welcome back to episode 8 of Calculated Chaos. To here, I'm here uh, today I'm here with Keen Gannon, Darrett Ta and Thomas Arnold. So what we're doing today is we're doing Gary Moscarelli's Face Your Fears, um, holding tarantulas, snakes <laughs> um, and um, those videos are coming out soon enough. So how do you want today lads? How would you think of it? It's grand, yeah. I never... Uh... <laughs> Didn't even know what I was coming into today. Yeah. Did you know? Thomas goes, oh, we're just getting a few pictures. <laughs> just make around to get a picture. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought it was. I didn't like realize it was going to be loads of different animals and stuff. So no, uh, I didn't know there'd be so many. Like, proper hole and then like face our fears. I, th- I thought that was just. A, I thought that was that just was a just fancy a name. name. That was that was the caption. Like I thought that was. The <laughs> no, because like Gary obviously explained it to me and Jack exactly what was going to happen. And I just presumed you were in the same books. I know he's been on the phone with you and stuff a lot about it, but. Uh, but even I didn't really know what was going yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But I think he might have specifically kept like that because like what he wanted to do is. You know when you walked in, actually I won't spoil, actually I won't, I won't spoil exactly what happened, but anyway, he wanted to keep you in the dark so you can find out which animal you were most afraid of. Yeah. And if, you, if you'd known that, you wouldn't, it wouldn't have been this authentic because you kind of lied about what animal you were afraid of and stuff. So yeah. that's why he kind of kept you in the dark a little bit, I think. Um, but yeah, so I just start, I have a couple of questions I want to talk, talk, touch on with the lads. So we start clean about the whole anto. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> you talk about the, uh, how you started Anto and what was why you started in the first but place. But who is King of Ganon? Who's King Ganon? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure that out. Do we need to explain? Like, you know, Keen's like a TikTok star, pretty much. All right, we'll start off. Keen's your, yeah, your yeah, Irish yeah. TikTok, star, TikTok star, blowing up numbers and. Famous birthdays. That's how, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's how I got the name, TikTok star, from Famous Birthdays. <laughs> I think uh, Anto was created in a Cal's video. It was like just off the cuff for like, ah, oh, we'll just stick a character in here. He was getting a post. Uh, so we're like, oh, just make up something. And then it naturally just... There's a bit of beef between me and Cal who came up with it. It was me. <laughs> Cal, Cal thinks that was him. Yeah. yeah. He came up with the name, I'll give him that. He didn't come up with the voice or the you know, mannerisms. <laughs> the, character, the character. The character. Yeah. He came up with the name, so you can have that 50%. And, and then how did you realise then that it was going to work <laughs> going to work well? Like, How did you then think to like use that character again in videos oh, people just kept commenting where's anto and like it was mainly just the like audience asking for it like um it wasn't really like oh i'm gonna keep doing this until i went to the meal and more people got pictures of anto than Kane. so i was like just use anto then <laughs> so and dara realized as well he was like yeah i think you should go with that like it's a good character like it could take off and yeah, yeah we were saying it's such it's such a meme yeah and we it's were like, like encouraging like it like mm-hmm. yeah yeah because there was uh, at the time you were doing Key and Gannon in your YouTube videos, yeah. in your personal YouTube videos, and then you would just do this Ando, who, in fairness, it, like you're very serious mm-hmm. doing it as Key yeah, and Gannon. I don't know why I was being serious. You were kind of serious and maybe a little bit shy. Yeah. And then Ando is like just completely the opposite. Just absolute baller. Yeah. It's so and it's so funny. So yeah. I mean, we know that. so easily able to like do. Mm-hmm. That's one of the hardest things with any character is trying to keep keeping character like without no pun intended and yeah. Keen was always able to keep in that Anto state pretty much on top mm. and like that's perfect yeah what's the stars boys <laughs> that's what I'm for, like. yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and one of the most interesting things about Anto uh, something that you said to me is that when we did do a meetup you said uh, I think you said you, that you're kind of uh, you'd be a bit shy or you're a bit awkward mm-hmm. like coming into like when you're talking to people and meeting people for the first time but you said anto Wasn't the character does be, not get embarrassed yeah he can't mm. be embarrassed he can't yeah nobody can embarrass him or make him look nervous or like care. that's so funny and that's so cool so and that's like, like a true I, embodiment of a character it's like weird it's like when people say that they get into character but i really did like i didn't feel nervous so i was not awkward for that part i don't know what it was yeah obviously that's in so i can do that yeah but i just need to figure out how to but you have it that's the thing a little bit yeah, yeah i've definitely Got into it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. And it was you that said that. You were like, oh, you should... De- it's, that's you. Like, you just... It's in it. you, yeah. To yeah, do it. yeah, yeah, That's why when I started on TikTok, I cut Anto out. Yeah. I was like, I'll just do me, but like Anto. Yeah. And it's worked, so... Yeah. And then obviously all your numbers have blown up since TikTok, hasn't like You're getting a lot yeah. of people... I, I waited until like 15k, I think, to start promoting YouTube, because I wanted to get people first before I started throwing too much at them. Mm. But yeah, it's like really taken off since... And then I got the Irish Disco video that like did really well. So it's just all taken off, I suppose. And what are you on now on TikTok? Um, I haven't checked, to be honest. Oh, like 30 plus K. Cool, cool, cool. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's 33.6. A, 
<laughs> but it, it's so funny as like it's such a land grab at the moment as like Gary's talking about the girl that she has like over 110,000 like, yeah. but, but like she I don't think she has a YouTube right now. does she have a YouTube? no, no she's, 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 gonna she's, a, she's gonna Instagram though oh she's gonna start a YouTube yeah, Instagram she has like 16 just popping everywhere like yeah like but like if you get an audience on tiktok it's just transferring so well they're so engaged on tiktok as well like yeah. much more than anywhere else yeah. like youtube is competing with but tiktok's like yeah every time i say tiktok i'm gonna laugh but <laughs> it was musically and it's like uh, yeah 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 um, and are you had a bit of a stunt on tiktok as well when you did a youtube video about it oh yeah yeah is this the first one where i tried to do like 24 hours on yeah. TikTok. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. So this was actually before Keen had even gotten on this TikTok. Is why, this work gave me the inspiration. Yeah. Like seeing Darren Thomas now is just in the background. Right? Yeah. That's a niche marker right there. I was like, oh, wait. I was like trying to learn what they were doing wrong. <laughs> Which was everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, you did get the viral video. The I, my second KK. video was like, you got, what did 250,000 views on TikTok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, since. mine went, uh, but it was fucking by chance. 300, 300, 300 views or something. something like, might have been 300,000, 500,000. I'm not sure. Much, but but they're all consistent. really consistent. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think I've got a brand. Like three or four times a day. Two times a day? Because yeah. I was over, it was over Christmas break. Okay. So I just, ah, just, yeah, went through. But the thing that sort of differentiated Keen's TikTok for me compared to what myself or Dara was doing that. Me and Dara would like hop on. We had this thing called like TikTok Thursdays for like three weeks where we'd meet up on a three weeks. It literally was three weeks. We'd meet up on a third. We were like TikToks popping. People are blowing up. We got to hop on it. And we just go through hashtags and try and figure out something to do and be like, Graham, we did it. Fuck, great. We'll meet up next week. Whereas with Kean's one, because the Kean persona had certain attributes to it like a team where he'd bring up bring back the six counties and relatable irish stuff and tala everything he did was within that sort of sphere it had a compounding effect so if you watched one tiktok you were guaranteed to like the rest mm -hmm. whereas me and dara it was like you're doing this and you're doing that and you're doing this so i think that was something and look i haven't done tiktok in ages yeah, yeah but i yeah, think yeah. that was one of the keys to keen success on it was that it is very consistent sort of brand like consistent and, and, branding and knows yeah. his audience yeah um, yeah like i'm kind of catering to my audience much more now like it started i was kind of experimenting like with weird things yeah but then once i did an irish related thing and people got that i was like yeah i'll just keep doing that thing yeah because that's and like people say oh be relatable but like you have to have a bit of talent there yeah. And you have to be able to like Keen would say you probably wouldn't say it, but like Keen is really good at like quick humor. Yeah. That's his. I think that's. So one of very good. Tala, like, is that where know, they throw quick humor all the time? What, like, you know, what? Is that I don't I don't know. That's what made me a professional at TikTok because honestly, <laughs> <laughs> that's what taught me all the stuff. Like, the snappiness. That's the relatable stuff. So I'm kind of glad that I live in Tala. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, even though it's not even though it's not Tala. Yup, Tala. Um, but see I, I was saying all that stuff before like I, I'm not like fake like I'm like oh I'm gonna try to say a saying because it's popular I was saying like you're bad at stuff before so then I just found out on TikTok I was like oh this is natural yeah 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 yeah, yeah. but definitely building the character seems to work as in Dara you did that a while back with Dara Dynamite yeah <laughs> like what, what like, as in, like, I only stumbled upon this lately the whole Dara yeah, yeah. Like, so the Dara Dynamite thing like it wasn't even really it didn't mean to be a character that was just his weird face that no, Dara Dynamite. It was gone through puberty at that point. Dara Dynamite was just my, like me coming up with a YouTube name. I was like, here, I, I don't want to use my actual name. I want to like separate like my professional life from me being like goofy and silly on camera and doing like sometimes controversial things or whatever. So that was the entire idea with Dara Dynamite. Mm. Uh, looking back on it now, like it's really embarrassing, you know, <laughs> really? like that sort of name. But like. I don't know. You have, to start somewhere. you have to start somewhere, and that's what made sense at the time. And uh, I mean, I suppose on like with Dire Dynamite, it was like I definitely was different. It, it, it sort of, although I didn't intend on it being a character, like it definitely wasn't me at the same time. Yeah, yeah. you know, your on camera person. It was the on camera personality. So like, I think I've moved on a good bit since then. But um, like, yeah, Dire Dynamite was meant to be more of like travel adventure kind of like high 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 octane travel adventure type videos mm -hmm. so like um like a lot of the videos that i was creating back then were i was trying to come up with things that nobody else would in the right mind would kind of do yeah, yeah. yeah that was the idea i was like i will do the thing that like no one else would ever like the, the their worst nightmare type thing yeah so that's why i started doing those like 
sleeping alone in an extreme circumstance that one type of house in the tunnel, in the tunnel the, in the middle of a mountain or something. Yeah, the the one um the, the a mine in the middle of on top of a mountain, like in the middle of a mountain, basically with a goddamn Ouija board with at, a Ouija at board at three a.m. at three a.m. Yeah. Like that is legit. Like that's actually legit. So like that was, that's what it's done today. That's like it's so the man that was uh yeah. It's so obviously one of the scariest no things I've did done. Where you like, or... your first date with a girl. Yeah. I was like, what are you doing? That is so, <laughs> that is so weird. weird. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, that's man. the. Yeah. Yeah, we're recording. I mean, like, oh, that's yeah, right. it. Yeah. It's a podcast, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so what I was saying was, how long are you guys gonna do this? Because we can grab food, and then I want to make the video with um, the two of you guys. Yeah. yeah we're gonna go so, on this another like. Ha- let's years. say half an hour. Or so. Oh, perfect. So we can grab some mm-hmm. food. I'm gonna text we'll finish up. Yeah. All right. Oh, is this recording now? Yeah, it is, yeah. Gang, gang. Okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. Right, See you later. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll probably cut that bit out. So, yeah, and as you can explain to me, your sister's wedding. Like, I watched, I watched that. I don't even, like, coordination wise, like, how does that even work? All right, okay. So I sister, couldn't believe that video. I, I, I sat there and I was like, this can't be real. Like, like, like I, I couldn't believe it. I'm a fake fan. Sorry. Have you not seen the we- yeah? That's great. The wedding video has been brought up. Yeah, so it's not real. You know that, right? Yeah. yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. I'm so leaving. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the the so the wedding video. If you like, you have to kind of look carefully at it. But uh, there's a very distinct part where I think I get into an elevator, and maybe just to provide some context, I created a video. I like did a kind of a, a stupid vlog video at my sister's wedding in Portugal, where like in the middle of it. I don't know where my sister starts freaking out and she basically like starts running away from her wedding. She gets cold feet. And she ends up like running, running down a beach, <laughs> running down a beach in her wedding dress. And I'm like chasing after her, trying to get her to go back. And, she, and she's, <laughs> and she's screaming about how like she doesn't want children and all that. <laughs> yeah. um, so it was a pretty crazy oh, video. But the, the point was, is that I had actually, at that time, uh, I think I was uh, in a phase where the, like, the sort of real videos weren't really working for me. I was like, here, like, how can I make this content a lot better? Mm-hmm. Then I was like, you know, if I'm going to make a video at a wedding, what's like something crazy that should happen at a wedding? I was like, what if my sister ran, ran from a wedding? Like, that's, I don't, I that's don't. you know, that's crazy content. Yeah. And uh, so what happened was um, we just, I recorded the wedding day as if everything was normal. I was just trying to make it funny. But there was a specific part where, uh, basically I go into an elevator and I'm about to like go up to my sister to check on her to see if she's okay. Yeah. As soon as I get into that elevator, it's actually two days later. So that's the, that's yeah, the point. Yeah. So if you, if you actually look closely at my clothes, you'll, you'll notice. But yeah, it was, so I had it all set up. I knew how I, wa- how I wanted the video to go. But as soon as I step into that ele- elevator, it's like, we've I've thought about exactly how I want the rest to go down. I've kind of coached my sister about what to say. And like, she yeah. hasn't really acted before, but. Just turned into a sketch. She did a great job. She, she did, did a great job, job didn't she? Yeah. Fair play to her. And how did you talk her into doing that? Like? Yeah, that's the biggest thing. Ah, uh, yeah, that's a, it's a hard one because it's like people don't want to be involved in those videos. But my, I don't know, my sister on her kind of fucking like, wedding weekend. Yeah, I know. That's it. That's because like, she's in a wedding dress as well. That's crazy. Like to run, to run like down a, a beach in your wedding dress. That's like pristine, yeah. and she gets onto the, like it gets sand everywhere. But yeah. um, I don't know. I guess I was just really passionate about making a video that. Maybe the passion just sort of rub, rubbed off on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, like I only saw that probably within the last two weeks, and I was like, I need to bring that up because like I don't know how in how you would even convince her to do that. Like you know, yeah. But um, that was very funny. And then how did Joe Dotty then come into involvement with Dark Dynamite? Yeah. So um, I. I forget how long I was making videos, but like this is pretty new into it. it I was still as the brand of Dire Dynamite. Um, I was doing those videos of, um, you know, the kind of like, oh, I'll be the guy that will do things that no one else will do. That was sort of the idea, scary things. And it was the video where I went into this like, like supposedly haunted cottage in, in Sligo. And uh, I made a video there where I slept alone. And then like my friends came and like basically like, they knew I was going to be there. They dropped me off and all that. And uh, so they came in the middle of the night at like two o'clock and just like scared the shit out of me. Yeah. But uh, anyways, that video, uh, I put that out, edited it together and 
that video was like the first video to kind of get picked up by other like media organizations. So um, the first one to get onto it was um, like an American TV show. So there are these guys called Right This Minute and they have like this, um, it's kind of like the their thing is meant to be, it's like a viral video aggregation for TV. It's like, this is what's happened online or whatever, you know? Yeah. So this video only had about like, like maybe a thousand views at the time when they found it. But um, they did a thing on it, and because they did a thing on it, Joe.ie heard about that. Joe.ie wrote an article. Her.ie wrote an article. It like so it kind of snowballed from there. So a few people wrote an article because the the numbers just were kind of good on it. Now my video didn't do that big, but what happened out of that was they wrote the articles. Someone in Joe.ie, like one of the like content managers, uh, like and the directors, was like, "Hey, there's someone who's doing something that's like." quite cool and it's content that we know we want to like move towards mm -hmm. so they were like here uh, let's contact this guy bring him in because they wanted to set up um, a facebook live show mm -hmm. so they did this thing called the joe show and it's basically like a live facebook show every week where it was like a talk show but they wanted different segments that are very much like online orientated so i was one of the guys i was basically a, a guest presenter who created like some sort of like viral video attempt you know or something kind of odd that's like edited into two minutes almost like buzzfeed yeah. and then i presented on the joe show so like that was my first kind of foray into like doing something that was a bit more mainstream and like trying like presenting basically Didn't so that was really like cool post your last video as well the servant thing no right this minute, that was the American, right, right this minute did yeah, yeah. but not your day no yeah that's what yeah. I'm saying, right? yeah 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 it's yeah. funny you had to go all the way across the atlantic it, man it's funny like i get definitely get you have to get onto american tv to come back yeah no i my videos definitely get a lot more love from overseas than in ireland for uh, sure you know that though right but uh, that's for sure i've had it hasn't really yes. popped yet i'm very italian interrupting the podcast again um i have no data so can i give you my number and could you text me when you're done yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry um what 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 you say sorry <laughs> msr i thought the video hadn't popped which video the server one. No, it didn't pop. They just posted it. But they, they, they did a. Did you not see? It? I showed it to you. No, I, I, yeah, yeah, but I thought you meant a lot of love in terms of. It had oh, blown sorry. Up uh, no, as in like, like people writing about it. Oh, it's been like you know, blogs and like blogs and, blogs and stuff. That's what I mean. Like that's where. Yeah, like they, I checked your YouTube comments and it's like girls from America. Someone, yeah, that that's like, kind of more airy. Kind of like loads of stuff. Like, yeah. oh, I really enjoyed this, but then like people are like gas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. like I had like a much more American audience at the start. Because mm -hmm. like I was getting kind of more blogs written you doing about my videos. I wasn't doing Irish relatable content, and I've just completely switched up now. Yeah, you've sold you've sold so sold that. Sold I got rid of Dara Dynamo and became Dara Ta. Yeah, and see the girl that made a video on you. Mm -hmm. She made a full, it was like the truth about Derek or something like that. Yeah, yeah, things. yeah. It was good. Like, what, what, that like uh, did, you, did she give you any heads up or did you just make that? No, no. Uh, so that was, uh, that, that's an interesting one because uh, a few, a couple of videos were made about me r just because I made one video about someone else mm -hmm. and that video just like went viral basically. It got like uh, over 500,000 views, I think. <laughs> no, no, I'm going to chuck around all these right, numbers. All right, You just with your 30k TikTok followers. Throwing it around. I, well, I got 500k views. <laughs> but anyway, it's like, so the video went went viral and um, people seemed to really, really connect with it. And uh, some of the people that connected with it like just made videos on it. Because I think they thought it was smart. Basically, the video that I made was uh, during the time when like hate videos and rant videos were huge. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm going to pick a character that everyone loves. I'm going to pick this guy that everyone loves in America that like there's been no hate towards and I'm going to pretend like I fucking hate him. But the thing is I flip it around really quickly. So, so people came in thinking I hated this guy. They're ready to absolutely like eat me alive. And then they realize, Oh, this guy's actually like doing some sort of like analysis of his content and kind of almost poking fun at the idea of people just creating hate videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there was a lot of dislikes. Oh yeah, but not, that's not that that's bad. No, no I think matter. if you flip it, like this, this is just a theory, right? Yeah, but yeah. The, 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 say the disabled one I put up like last weekend, because I flipped that so quick, 
because it was so blatant so quick that it wasn't me trying to act like i had a disability and be a dickhead yeah. that's why there's so many likes yeah, yeah. so i feel like because with your one it, it's it sustains for a while so oh, there's, uh, yeah. there's a time where someone could be like fuck him and leave yeah, you know yeah. what i mean yeah yeah um, so that was my first video to ever do like that and it's like something like 45 seconds to a minute before you find out that, oh wait, this guy doesn't hate him. So like that, I, that was a big learning curve. So mm, I, I made time. a few yeah. videos after that that like, it's flipped instantly. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I learned my lesson. And even with the whole um, kind of outrage culture and stuff, I thought it was, it was quite, like you know what you're making your information videos with the bin man, you did Shane Curran, you've done the disability one now. Mm. As in like, I thought it was quite interesting that you touched on the disability topic. Cause like, like on, on the internet, if you go anywhere outside of a very small bubble, people just are looking just to get angry and just attack like did you get any blowback on that at all i know you're very respectful and there was no piss taking in that you're genuinely trying to tell the story but did you get any blowback at all on it? and no i didn't i think beforehand when i sent the thumbnail to like keen and carl they were like oh that's on the line thomas sent me a voice message and i was like i was like he needs to do it exactly the right way i think he did like yeah yeah the first 30 seconds like that's concrete like you have to do that he sets it off like perfect yeah if, if you didn't get that right it would have been bad, yeah. bad, bad, bad. But well, it's uh, not like it's a bad video. Like it, you're trying to promote, like educate people, but people can take it the wrong way. So. Yeah, and I'm just too nice. Like I'm just not like I'm not a naturally a very polarizing character. Yeah. The type of person that, say for example, a KSI is very easy to hate. Yeah. I really don't like him. But yeah. but like me, I'm just normally quite passive and nice, and I think that really comes across. So I think you'd really have to be so like not thinking about have no empathy towards people with disabilities and really be taking the piss in the wheelchair for them for people to be like disliking it um well the whole wheelchair thing was an educational thing so to show what it looks like for them because like yeah 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 it was mad like it's just fair play to alan what what a man so uh yeah it was a good video like yeah and um and what made you start the series i know like obviously you kind of have your your side of content where you kind of play almost character character of yourself of kind of like the over bubbly kind of piss taken but then you mm -hmm. have now you're starting to do more content where it's more kind of i don't know more kind of not documentary style but kind of documenting yeah, someone's yeah, life you know mm -hmm. what made you go more towards that content or what's the kind of plan uh, what views. yeah 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 definitely a bit of views uh like it was genuinely because when oren tully he was like my friend who died last year he's like 18 he had a heart attack mm -hmm. and um after that i was like fuck like what if i died in a year and I was looking back on fucking videos of me sneaking into EP. Like, that's not very fulfilling, is it? So it's not that I don't want to have a laugh anymore or anything, but I would like to start making some videos that obviously, and when I mean it, when obviously YouTubers want to get views, but for me, it's also like, it's just promoting your message. Like I think anybody who has a channel, you want a lot of people to hear what you have to say. And so it's a combination of, I want to do videos that will have impact so a bit on disability a bit on like the environment but in sort of a funny way that people will actually listen because there's a lot of people who just spout say for example the environment people just like spout on about it but it's not engaging yeah. the average person's like i don't give a fuck so i try and put my spin of making something interesting into the content like i don't think anybody's going to think a garbage man by in and of itself is interesting yeah. and that's one of the few things i'm good at is like i disagree there though disagree on what that like the uh, garbage man isn't interesting. Like I feel like everyone like seeing into the life of a garbage man is actually really interesting. Everyone yeah, but is. I'm just thinking if you were to say to someone, make a video on a garbage man, I'm not sure if they'd be like, oh yeah, great video idea, that's brilliant. I think that's it, it. But isn't that exactly what we said? Well, it's like an original idea. Like people won't know it's good until they see it. They'll be like, oh yeah, that's actually really. Good. But I think it's tantalizing right from the get go because you're kind of like. Wow, I actually wonder what their day is like. How hard it is it? Or it's only when you see the video. Like, oh, yeah, it's when you see that title. Yeah, it's I'm like saying beforehand, you wouldn't be like. Yeah, yeah, because like there's a lot of garbage man videos on YouTube that like are pretty shit. Like they don't yeah. have a lot of views. So I think it needs to be presented in such a way that it's interesting. Yeah, you like you can saying that like you want to like pick a thing that people are doing bad and just do it really well. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. When people see your video, they're like, oh, this is much better than the last one. Mm. Yeah. Subscribe. But yeah, I'm only on like 12k, so like I. I think when I hit like a hundred K in time over time, then it'll be more of like a, like at the moment I am very much experimenting. Like I'm yeah. always tossing ideas over with Dara and stuff. So until I hit a point of like big scale, then I can think I can look back and assess what were the right strategies for like growth. But yeah.
But at the moment, you are kind of cracking down into... Uh, I'm getting better. More, I'm more better than what I was when I was in UCD, which was like just making shit and like hustling really hard, but for literally nothing. Like mm-hmm. 500 views on stuff. Yeah. Not that that's something to be laughed at, but there was no growth in making videos about chicken fillet rolls and the science building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> with, with, with him Hickey, so... Uh, boom. <laughs> <Le> boom. <laughs> um, yeah and ultimately you got to be evolving like dara says he you know he looks back and almost cringes at his dara dynamite character yeah. but that shows that you're at a place now that you can look back and be like that was cringy because you've evolved yeah. so you should be looking back on last year's content and being like that wasn't it this is it mm-hmm. likewise next year i'm going to look back on this year and be yeah. like i wasn't where i was at in 2019 2020 is so much better so that shows that you're evolving yeah. And even with like promo, like I've seen for, since when I started to now, it's like changed so much. Like every summer it goes like much better. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm like, oh, that's the best summer of my life. You always make a video about it. Then the next summer, like, fucking hell. That was yeah, the best summer of my life. Yeah. Keep going, going. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But like, I'm only, I'm literally, I'm only one year on YouTube next Sunday. So like, I'm still very, very new to this. So yeah, just yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, no, it's going to be interesting to kind of see looking back. But yeah, I think you're right with the whole, I guess, was you've been on. The platform for a lot longer than i have so i'm still very very new to this but um yeah and um with, even with the guys the videos you're making you you're obviously making a lot of relatable college content and they like 500 points you're leaving search i'm doing a lot of that at the moment because it gets good traction search wide whoa how do you find a balance between like finding like a nice topic that like, like you know let's say we're talking about earlier the disco video Irish disco video most of us have done Irish definitely want to do that because i haven't done it yet yeah, yeah. yeah. like it does so well but obviously, like I said, if you look back, it's not very fulfilling content, you know, versus you with Jane Kern or the disability video. Yeah. How do you find, how do you balance that? Or like, what's, what's your, all your thoughts on that? Um, Like, I think it's a mix, really. Like, you, ultimately, you do what feels right. Like some, you know, one week I'm like, I want to make a fulfilling video. The next week I'm like, I want to rake in a lot of views. Like, it depends how you feel upon stuff. Me though, say for example, the, the, disc so say for example right the ep one that you did so we all snuck into ep or me keen Leighton penrose did last summer i was there i snuck in did you yeah, yeah. i fucking recorded it for i'm an asshole i, I drove you there you <laughs> asshole <laughs> i literally I drove you there i'm like what about darren yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm so sorry forget so about sorry. me just drove you there just yeah. but driver. like i don't know keen what you think but like it's probably not your best video but like it was a sneaking in one whereas <laughs> like if if i'm doing something just for views like it's still going to be a good video but the thing is you have to get them views to get people in to watch your content that's good. Care. So like you don't I don't care about making that video. Once it gets the views in, then you start making good content like that. Yeah. You have to make an Irish disco video to get ten thousand more subscribers that will watch the disabled video. That's what you have to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not really selling you like so or like doing that it's really smart, like yeah, smart. yeah, no, it is, yeah. Obviously it's marketing. Taking advantage it's, of that. Yeah, it is it is marketing. Yeah. But it's yeah, it's what people want. Because obviously you want to educate people, so you want more people. So Edutainment is the thing. Is, yeah. Is, is yeah, 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 yeah. I think that that was a word that on, on the Paulson podcast is what they're doing. Like they're saying, like Joe Rogan's very like value based and like obviously very high, like they're very getting talented people on, so it's an interesting conversation. But they're trying to be a little more entertaining and piss taking, so people actually enjoy listening to it and they're kind of having the crack. And I think actually then the kind of balance between logan and mike and whatever guests that you're quite good i don't know you think you've listened to the podcast mm-hmm. very good but um so then moving on to the whole irish vlog squad thing so like can you explain the origins of that and where did, <laughs> <laughs> like where did that come about or who started that well me and thomas collabed in may of 2017 <laughs> just to bring it back to where it all began bit of history so i just got back from italy you know first collab with a youtuber i thought he was like famous he had a thousand i had 200 i was like oh this guy's famous i was like i'm not even going to be able to be in this vlog i was like i'm so nervous but then uh he had collabed with tom then we did a football meal then that was cal i already met sean like stella ben sean. brady is often ben there. brady yeah i met stella sean like ages ago i met him at ben keely's meal so i knew him and then it all just kind of went together. Yeah, I can't even remember exactly how it happened, the sequence of events, but basically, yeah, we all... <laughs> with Tom? Yeah, I came just with Tom. Yeah, 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 I emailed Thomas just to do a collaboration. So essentially, we're just talking about like a network of collaborations. Yeah. Uh, but there was at one point, there was just, it suddenly crossed up. There's probably the meetup, a meetup. Yeah, well, well, like the the actual genesis of the vlog squad, I think was like, 
when Jaffman did his meetup in October 2018, mm -hmm. yeah, there was like so 300 awesome. people. Show so the, the, there was a summer 2017 meetup, a few people showed up. Summer 2018, like the guts of 100 people showed up for Cal or Sean. And then Jaffman had his meetup in October and 300 people showed up. And like me and Dara were like, holy shit, we need to do an event. Because there was never a meetup where everybody was together. Mm. And the fact that so many people, we basically, like, when I mean we, Jaffa Man, when Jaffa Man shut down Grafton Street, it was like, wow, like, these people, the, I think the, the biggest testament to show someone is a fan is that they'll be there in person. Yeah. Yeah. And so we were like, why don't we do something that we can give them more than just a selfie yeah. and an hour in the cold yeah. on the Grafton Street where but, we can give them more. Before you even go that far, just, like, by virtue of us like showing up together and just doing these meetups as like individual cr creators, they're just suddenly like organically, there was kind of a buzz around this group of people. Mm. So I think that's kind of where it was. It was like organically, we've been grouped in together. And we kind of just didn't by do it ourselves. We didn't like, do it ourselves. That's what I'm saying. Instagram and YouTube was kind of pushing us together. To yeah, like, oh, they Dara were. And Thomas and Keen, it was all just going together. They were kind so of seen it as like a family. And so I'm not even sure, did we coin Irish Vlog Squad? no but like we were trying to think of a name for ages for the events mm -hmm. and the irish vlog squad was there from the beginning but we were like oh no we can't use that because it's too like david dobrik's vlog squad but that's the term that was given basically to the group colloquially yeah you know, well i can't even say that word like that's what the fan accounts call it and with Clash well, the I, well, i'm pretty sure we fed it. that to them at one point didn't we I don't, I think we I don't think we I did I think there's been like one caption where it said Irish Vlog Squad That's oh we definitely did at one point oh we did we did hashtag Irish Vlog Squad we okay, did yeah. Yeah. Okay. so as soon I, but I now think they all they, use it yeah they saw us as a group that had already organically we were some kind of group that they want like they sort of wanted boy to band. have uh, like yeah we're like a boy band that's essentially yeah, I think that's how they saw us kind of. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Well, man band we're just a, we're just a man <laughs> but anyway yeah. so we we put out that hashtag hashtag irish vlog squad I, I remember doing that as soon as we did that it, that was it that mm. was like almost locked in with a, with a lot of like fans and now, now there's fan accounts called now there's fan, 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 fan yeah. accounts with it's irish vlog like squad you're doing stuff and you don't realize till afterwards what you were doing like now it makes sense what we're doing like it was all combining and family. yeah yeah but then when you look back you're like oh it makes sense like, so yeah. so it happened really organically yeah. it's almost like we, we created it without realizing what we were doing it was yeah. that it wasn't forced at all like yeah. the collabs were real forced it was like me and Tom me and Cal and Tom yeah. but it was like meeting one of your mates to make a video like because the, the 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 community was in our eyes was so small because you both have the same interests you're both trying to vlog you're both trying to make videos yes yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 but like it's just a mutual thing that you both understand like and you're talking about because like nobody no you before, can't go to college and yeah, be like yo how, the, the click through rate in that video was <laughs> sick I got 60% audience retention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the average view duration was 4 minutes 15 seconds last month. Oh. What was your CPM? 4.18. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was actually, no. But like nobody it's can relate to that. Nobody can understand. Like people can relate to our videos, but not the behind the scenes of how we make yeah, them. Yeah. Um, that was clippable right there. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, so all that stuff sort of brought us together. And then what Tom was just about to mention was this event that we ran called Clash the Clickbait. And that absolutely solidified it, I think. Because then we, we definitely promoted ourselves as the Irish Vlog Squad are getting together to put on this event. And it's going like, you know, a group of YouTubers, Irish YouTubers, who like, um, and we're going to just do something a bit like over the top. in comparison. Like, we're not doing a meetup. We're go creating a game show. We're going to have like... Uh, like a speech and like a Q&A panel and like a live the event. whole shebang a like performance. a proper performance yeah. not like these TikTok stars that you see lip syncing songs on stage yeah <laughs> and then literally just a picture and it costs like 500 euros yeah yeah, yeah. we went yeah. like over over the top like yeah, yeah, with, yeah. with this so and much like and reasonably and, priced yeah and it's good advertising for yourself as well because like a lot of people a lot of smaller creators went and paid and did vlogs in the day so like like once they watch one of the Clash of Clickbait videos they all, like, I, I, well, I think I watched one of yours and then it all, I just got recommended all the other ones. Yeah, it was mad to like, That's see That's the thing, it's the collaboration. The yeah. Like people getting up in the morning, going to the event, like getting a little, it's mad, it's, so it's just weird. There it was is one weird, guy. It's yeah. cool, like so cool. One twelve-year-old guy. He was like, "Man, I'm gonna make a vlog of the day," and he literally put up a YouTube video, thirty-five seconds long. He goes, 
Went to Clash of the Clickbait today. Was class. Met Tom. He's a legend. <laughs> like and subscribe. I'll see you next week. <laughs> that was literally it. He recorded it off his phone as well. Oh, man. So funny. Well, if you think about like, the meetups, like, people are like, getting up and getting on the bus, going to there to meet you. It's just a weird thing. That's so weird. Just take it like I'm still not used to it. So yeah. And we're getting better at it. Like, like, we should be charging Stephen's Green oh, at this point. Stephen's Green. <laughs> yeah, it brings so much uh, attention to Stephen's Green. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Gino's gelatos. Yes. <laughs> yeah, gelatos, yeah. But yeah, you're definitely right with the whole like talking behind you in the YouTube as in like that's why kind of I think me, Jack and Gary kind of all kind of talk a lot because we can talk about that whereas you know you got your own side in Dublin but like yeah like not many people can talk about average view duration what's doing well what, what did well for you oh that was good with your videos last day but we don't want to send videos to each other yeah. <laughs> like, so I'm, I'm just laughing because me and Hollis are like scientists yeah. We are. We're we like, laugh all the time. We we're laugh like, at how nerdy <laughs> we are about videos. <laughs> I met this guy outside <laughs> Aldi. I met I met this guy outside Aldi. And we were getting like food to watch a Shane Dawson documentary, and he goes, "Man, oh my god, it's Thomas Arnold." And he sounded like hyperventilating. And the the first, first thing, thing I Thomas asked does. him was, uh, "When did you first start watching me?" Like I go into these questions of like, "What age are you? Where are you from? Are you in college?" Are Thomas you? was there to like get like start digging at all the information he could like extract from this one fan yeah. it's also weird when people come up and ask you for a picture and don't say they just picture and that's it you want to actually talk to them because if they're supporting yeah. you you want to like understand like, yeah, yeah. Are, what the name is. but it's because they're so young I feel like if they're a little bit older they'd be like man I appreciate what you're doing yeah. I like to blab no but you can see when, yeah. when you ask someone their name they're like weird I think you you have a younger demographic like, I don't know what's your demographic like because I know probably year two is it's like, it's kind it's changing like it's de- it was like uh kind of older but now it is like probably 60 percent like uh under 24 years old yeah so like I don't know teenagers and then 18 to 24 yeah yeah, yeah. and then it's like 70 like 60 I think 60 or 70 percent Irish Okay. So the rest is like kind of you. But it wasn't like that always. Yeah. Well, like that's completely flipped recently. So it's always all of us. Yeah. I think. I think when the squad thing came about, it just did make us all a lot more. Now, yeah. obviously, Rub like to an depending audience. on your analytics, say for example, Cal Cal's English slang versus Irish slang blew up. That's going to have a lot of UK viewers. So yeah. you might be looking at your total analytics and say, look, fifteen percent of my viewers are UK, but that's because One video. makes up half your channel views. views. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the t- statistics can be oh, skewed really in that way. Okay. Yeah, because a lot of people wouldn't realize the thought and the analytics. Like you, you two are very clinical in what you're actually doing. Very like, clinical. Like you can't hide it. Like no, nerd out all the time. I didn't understand how YouTube worked before this. <laughs> oh, just whack a thumbnail on it. No, there needs to be yellow in the thumbnail. You need to have a ten minute all this stuff. Like, audience retention. Yeah, yeah. I was like, whack the video up. See what <laughs> but that's to our detriment as well. well it like. helps. It helps. Me, like, it definitely. It obviously helps. But like, you can be too clinical about it. There's a and there's a combination between an art and a science, and there's uh, there's times at which we just need to feel stuff out more yeah. to be like, yo man, like how does this feel? Not just is there a cut at this point you know what i mean yeah, now yeah. i'm definitely of the of the uh, like belief that you can scientifically make your way to an arse yeah as long as you have some form of feeling like i think you can it's just how my We're brain works feeling, like. yeah we do we la- <laughs> we like i have a lot of empathy but i can also lack it at times as well and yeah like certain people are just able to make stuff whereas i don't know i want to speak for dara but like say for example storytelling i find so hard i i'll send stuff to dara and it'll be completely wrong but i don't know why until he tells me because i really need to like do revisions of stuff that that's the one thing i'm good at, and we're both good at the one thing we're both good at is like we will happily know if something's wrong and revise it we won't hang on to something that's shit because we do we do have an eye for that we're like that's good that's not so it's just he- why it's good and why it's not good is what we struggle with sometimes. You know what we, we should do for the storytelling? Read a few kids books. Don't know why I went to <laughs> <laughs> No, I was like, that's, just, that's such a good kids. point. Yeah, so. Start from the bottom. Yeah. And Dr. Seuss all like, over again. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Whatever, like top notch stuff. Like yeah, man. Shakespeare. We should. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then <laughs> that, uh, that happens all the time man. we were going on a rant for like 45 minutes and then like a, a proper little snippet comes up we're like oh bollocks that's I broke it, it. I broke it. <laughs> <laughs> we should be just reading kids books yeah. fuck we're way yeah, over complicating yeah. it 
We um, overcomplicate. Yeah, we overcomplicate everything. Where did you yeah. doing your site like with your lab coats on? Was Jack on with his phone? <laughs> and, like, he's, yeah, he's, he's, that's, that's it, phone man. That's it. That's the that's the problem. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we literally have lab coats on. And Imagine dork. If you thought of it like science as well. Like, if oh you had, my god! You had this and any proper. Like, man, I think he is but a bit of a scientist. I think he's hiding a bit of stuff. Yeah, I, I do think so too. But yeah. also, he just simply has the X factor. And that's something that everybody has to come to terms with. Yeah. Like, I just don't have the same X factor that he has. Like, I have my own innate. I have stuff I'm good at and stuff I'm bad at. Mm-hmm. And I've got to, like, you know, the stuff I'm not good at, try and get somebody else in to do that for me. Or, like, integrate them into the video. Not everybody is meant to be a 1 million subscribers YouTuber. Mm-hmm. Jaffman, I think, is. Yeah. Um, whether or not I am, I have no fucking clue. But you, either way, you have to work out what your strengths are. And even if that doesn't mean that you can become a famous YouTuber, knowing your strengths is far more important than getting a random number on a social media platform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you can then apply that to other aspects of your life. Yeah, it almost seems like with YouTube, as in like, like I think Mr. Beast is the best example I've heard, is like, he's been doing YouTube, like I know at least 2012 is when he started. And like, he had like a couple of hundred subs for ages. Like, he was like throwing, throwing ideas, trying to come up with stuff. Like, he actually, one thing he did, and I actually kind of want to do it myself, is that, uh, he recorded a video in 2012 he's like what I want to be in five years time and he scheduled it five years later which I think is a brilliant idea but that's beside the point but uh, he eventually kept throwing ideas on his YouTube channel like totally changed up his channel until it clicked and now he's like obviously he's blown up now and he's getting millions and millions of views mm-hmm. and obviously a lot of money good like do you watch his videos yeah what's yeah. mad is I subscribed to him in like 5k free yeah. when was what? that Right before he posted that viral one, the counting to 100, like one of the Are you serious? Yeah, 5k. Oh my god. I, I subscribed to him when he did like something like he got like 10,000 views on it, like right at the very start. Yeah, like before all you of find this. It. How did you find like, it? He was like linked in someone else's YouTube or like something happened. I, I can't remember, but it was like 5k. Oh and my also god. I also was subscribed to 10k. Wow. Are you serious? Yeah. Whoa. I haven't found any YouTubers like that since. Like, I haven't subscribed that real low numbers. Yeah, yeah. right, right. But yeah. Maybe Mr. Even Beast, man, he was just Maybe. Mr. Beast was so hungry to become a YouTuber. Yeah. Like he, it's in his. He's been on a co- like a handful of podcasts, but he's like, I will do anything. Like he was saying Logan Paul a hundred thousand times. Like who the fuck does that? That's yeah. even crazier than this guy. Yeah, you know what I mean. So he just wanted it so bad, yeah. but it was to the detriment of other stuff. And he says that he's like, all I wanted to be was a YouTuber. Mm-hmm. Everything. So uh, things come with balances. Like we have a life outside of YouTube. I like to think. You do. You Because even he talks. Sixth year. <laughs> yeah, you six boys year. are in sixth year. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, we should we really be recording the podcast by now? Yeah. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but my teachers don't see this. Bang <laughs> on the weekend, it's grand. Yeah. yeah. Um, You're allowed to break down. But even he was saying, like, I remember listening to him on the Hastry Hastry podcast, and he went like, like he like, oh, you're wearing something nice. He went, I don't dress myself. And, like he's like, I pay a stylist because I literally don't even want to think about that. Like he's like, all I do is think about video ideas and that's all I do and everyone else around me edits the videos posts them like apparently he said that like his videos go through every single one of his team team members and then it goes out because that it optimizes make sure that if they all enjoy it and going to watch it the more likely the general person is going to enjoy it as well but he, like even his mother right, has ones and stuff in the background like he like he's a full staff like it's it's incredible the what he's actually built up and obviously same with Logan Paul a thousand times but even like publicizing Logan Paul's merch like it, like, like, like you know, I remember you dropped the link one time for Logan Paul's merch in his fucking bio. Like, why would you do that? Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. just for memes, isn't it? That's just like a random... He's a great meme generator, yeah. actually. Yeah. But was that recently? Because I've got... Yeah, I won that long ago. Right, so... And Logan, if it was, was that two weeks ago? Logan did the reverse. So, you know why that is? Because they're doing a collab. Because Logan Paul has invested money into Mr. Beast's clothing line. That's oh. why. So, well, Logan Paul's a, uh, an investor. So, that's oh, why. Oh, yeah, yeah. There we go. So some, when did he say that? It's in uh, one of his Instagram posts. He has like hashtag investor, new, like a hashtag new investor, Logan Paul. Yeah. An investment on his behalf now. Like Mr. Yeah. Beast is coming in the right direction. Yeah, yeah. I think it's good what he's doing though, where he like sources it out. So he just has it's to source it. Yeah. Like my, my goal is to make my man a manager. <laughs> That's yeah. just always been my goal. I want to get my dad to handle merchandise. Yeah. I'll, I'll just get him yeah, to ship wanna, stuff out. I want to yeah. like give people. I want to give him work actually. <laughs> I'd love to support my family. Yeah. yeah. Like literally just hire your nanny to like do something. My nanny's in a home, like fine. Yeah. My yeah. nanny's grand she, she loves it. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be your manager. He needs four K for that video. Four K. Teach her how to do videography. <laughs> Angles. 
And uh, <laughs> gotta get those angles. Right. Do, do you think much about merch yourself? Are you gonna do it? Like, what's what's the yeah. plan? I know you're not. You don't really plan. Like, as like, I know your whole thing is like YouTube's not really the revenue stream. You kind of just want to do that as like, a fun side. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm still thinking of merch at the moment. But yeah. 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 Are you um, all like gonna do individual or group merch or what's the plan? <laughs> Man, we literally spoke about that well, in the car on the I way down. We're we're yeah. figuring that out. Like, yeah. we do want to. You, you just mentioned the whole that YouTube isn't a revenue stream, and we know that. But like, yes. all of us put a lot of time into it, right. and it just at this stage, I think it kind of needs to be. So we have plans to like do stuff. definitely create merch and just create more uh, business opportunities around our YouTube channels. Yeah, yeah. especially since we all kind of got together, it just you makes just sense. Want to, like, create community. That's why you really want to do it. It's just like yeah, yeah. I like the word fans. Yeah, 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 I do as well. It's people who yeah, like yeah, support yeah, yeah. you. Yeah. Supporters or like you know, it is a community, like a community. If, yeah, because we really do. We've built up so much. Yeah, it's so nice. Mad how much it's changed. Yeah, like, and it's mad that like certain people in the fandom have friends with each other. They, so the fandom being like the group of fans who yeah, like they, they all make edits together on Instagram. Yeah, so I've seen some of them. Even like, some of them have followed me as well. I was like, <laughs> even I ended up getting some of them. Like, they're not even meeting like, up for the meetups. They're just meeting up to be friends now. So that's like a community. That's so nice. And and we're, like, that's the, the coolest thing, thing that we can do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and we have something in common. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, just like Sarah's. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, that is the answer to that question. We are going to try and like just create more of it. It'd be so cool if we could start not supporting ourselves but like if we could to, to some extent just start well, yeah, like, minimum wage on YouTube or any yeah. way from social media on that's yeah. it yeah because yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of hours and like I know for myself I have a very small audience but I put a lot of hours in I can't even yeah. imagine what you've done over the years you know so like it's only right that you should eventually have some sort of monetary reward out of it that's we can't get that into your head either because then if it fails you're like oh I put so much it's just yeah like, yeah fun. yeah you should never just yeah just have fun with it yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so that would be it will be an next venture I was like Mr. Reese I was like oh, I just want to be a YouTuber now I'm just having fun with it if it goes yeah. it goes it doesn't yeah. have fun TikTok you fall back on TikTok oh yeah I can yeah. do TikTok that. that's sorry because it would fuck you up like yeah, yeah, yeah you actually it's even my the... mom said to me she's like be careful like just in case it, she's like I know you probably like she's like I believe in you, but just in case if it doesn't, like don't get too like. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But it is just fun to do stuff like this. And yeah. Have fun. yeah, yeah. Like even today's a perfect example. Yeah. Like it's like that. That was a even fun if day. we weren't recording this, it would be fun. Like it's just an experience. Like it's just. Yeah, yeah. 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 But it's funny the doors that are open because it's like I would have never met you. The chance you might not have met each other if we hadn't actually started posting videos on the internet. So if I didn't post that oh, definitely. Not video back in twenty twelve, I wouldn't be here today. Yeah. <laughs> No, that is a fact. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I met. I didn't think I was meeting Keen when I met Keen. I thought I was meeting a guy called Liam Cannon. Uh, so sorry. So I knew. I knew this powerlifter called Liam Cannon. Yeah. And uh, I was in a car with Glenn Gillen. Yeah. Uh, filming his five K video, and he's like, "Have you seen that guy, uh, Liam Cannon?" But I heard it as Keen Gannon. Yeah. And then. And he started commenting on my videos. I was like, "This fella is commenting on my videos. Who's this?" And then he put up on Instagram, he's like, he wants to collab and all. But he, did, he still thought it was Liam Cannon. <laughs> so, like, Glenn Cannon. tells me the name of a powerlifter, and I type in Keen's name into yeah. YouTube. I find Keen, yeah. and then I started commenting so on his video. to Glenn Gillen for <laughs> What the hell? That is amazing. And know, me and Cal met on a Minecraft server in 2013. I was 12, and I literally joined, and he was like, get on my ropes. And I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then I added him on, not added him subscribe to his youtube channel i think he had like 100 i was Cadres. watching back then then i stopped for ages came back with like uh, two years later 2k or something yeah, yeah. Two, yeah. yeah around the time that i met you yeah. mad shit man yeah. oh, that's yeah. mad um so we might as well wrap it up just time wise um so thank you everyone for listening thank you the lads for doing the podcast today um and yeah we'll see you next month good night relive